Okay, today's topic is simply going to be on evaluating functions. Sorry about that if you heard that. Evaluating functions. So we're going to spend today um, doing several examples on evaluating functions. Let's first talk about what a function is. Let's let f be a function. Let f be a function. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little conveyor belt. This is what my sophomore math teacher did for me, so I'll do the same for you. Here's our conveyor belt. It's a machine, and this machine is the function f. And there is somebody right here standing here with an x. This x is called the input And what they're going to do is that person is going to put the X on the conveyor belt. And it's going to go down the conveyor belt. The conveyor belt is going to spin. It's going to rotate. And this X will go down the conveyor belt into the function F. And things will happen to it. And what's going to happen is as it comes out, you will get two things. You will get an F of x or you will get a y value. They will come out of the function box, the conveyor, the magic machine, and this is what we call our output. Okay. So you input an x into a function and you get out an f of x or a y, whatever you want to call it. So it is very important over here to note that f of x is a y. They are the same. They are one and the same. Now, I've been saying this for uh, the video now, so let's write this down. f of x. Let's not do it there. Let's do it below. Sorry. That is read f of x. You need to understand that this does not mean multiplication. Not. Not. Multiplication. Not multiply. Not. Okay? There is no multiplication going here. This is notation only. F of x. Okay? So do not multiply f times x. It's just f of x. Okay? Something else to note, and let me scoot down, is the definition of a function. Notice how many x's I put in. I put in one x. And when it, the one x goes through, you only get one f of x, or you only get one y. This is exactly the definition of a function. Function. What you need to remember is each input or we'll call x, has exactly one, has exactly one output. And we'll call that y. This is exactly what a function is. So when this x goes into this function machine, it comes out as an f of x or a y. And you just get one value, one y for every x. Okay? So, What's going to happen when we evaluate these functions? Well, this word evaluate that you will see, evaluate, I'll do that better. Sorry, evaluate. Simply means, the word evaluate simply means plug in the x, okay? Substitute the value of x, 
Okay, that's what a value means. Substitute substitute the value of x. So that's all we're going to do. We're going to take a function, we're going to plug in an x value and do some simplification and boom, we're done. Okay, so evaluate. So let's start our examples. I have a couple examples and all of them we are going to evaluate. Evaluate in every one. So first example, I will give you a function f of x equals negative 3x plus 7, and I'm going to tell you that x equals negative 2. All right. So this is the x value right here. Wherever I see an x, I'm going to plug it into the function. I see two x's, one there and one there, two x's. So I'm going to transform this function into f of negative 2 equals negative 3 times negative 2. Notice parentheses, plus 7. And now we simplify the right side. Negative 3 times negative 2 is 6, and 6 plus 7 is 13. So I would like the answer to be written like this. We're going to do it two ways. f of negative 2 equals 13. That's way number one. Way number two is I want us to get used to points because we're going to move to there when we start doing lines. This is a point. This, right there, sorry, different color. This right here is x and this right here is y. So we can take it and create the point negative 2, 13. That's the second answer I want. So I want both answers for all these problems. f of negative 2 equals 13 and negative 2, 13. Second example. g. Uh-oh. g of x. No big deal. It's just a different function. g of x equals x squared plus 2x minus 10. And we're going to do this when x is negative 2. Evaluate it when x is negative 2. Okay, so what we're going to do is everywhere you see an x goes the negative 2. So I see it once, twice, three times. Three times negative 2 goes into this function, g of negative 2 equals. Now notice, negative 2 goes in a parenthesis because that's x. And then the squared goes on the outside. Very important. Plus 2 times negative 2 minus 10. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and simplify it below. Okay, so this equals negative 2 squared. Now, on the side down here, negative 2 squared is negative 2 times negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2. It's negative 2 written twice. A negative times a negative is a positive. That's just 4, positive 4. Okay, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, and the minus 10 comes down. 4 minus 4 cancels, right? And you're left with negative 10. So what does g of negative 2 equal? It equals negative 10. The second answer I want is, of course, the point x is negative 2, y is negative 10. There we go. Okay. Uh-oh. Let me undo that. Sorry, sorry. Okay, next. Third example. f of x equals 4x minus 1. We're going to evaluate when x is negative 3. Okay, so again, I see an x value here of negative 3, 1x, 2x. f of negative 3 equals 4 times negative 3 minus 1. Go ahead and simplify it left to right. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. 
the minus 1 comes. Negative 12 minus 1 is negative 13. So f of negative 3 equals negative 13. The other answer that you might have, that you need to have, is the point. This is x, that's y. Negative 3, comma, negative 13. Okay, next example, just a couple more and I'll be finished. All the same kind of problem. Plug it in, simplify. g of x equals negative 2x squared plus 5 And we're going to look at when x equals negative 4. x is negative 4 once, twice. g of negative 4 equals negative 2. Parenthesis, the x is being squared. Negative 4 is being squared plus 5. I wanted to show you on the side here, negative 2x squared. What this is, this is negative 2 times x times x. Notice that the squared does not go to the negative 2. That's very important to realize. So over here, this problem is negative 2 times negative 4 times negative 4. We do this first because you're squaring it. Negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. So notice that we don't even touch the negative 2 yet. So we're going to get negative 2 times, this becomes 16. You can leave it in a parenthesis or you can put the little dot, it doesn't matter, plus 5. But notice, okay, I did not multiply negative 2 times negative 4 first. I squared the negative 4, order of operations. So we get g of negative 4. This is multiplication. Do that first. You get negative 32 plus 5, which means g of negative 4 equals negative 32 plus 5 is negative 27. There you go. I need to answer it in the second way, right? The second way is the point. x is negative 4 and y is negative 27 really want to reinforce that that number you get out is the y and the number you put in is x. That's why we're doing a point every time. Okay, a couple more. Five. Okay, let's try this one. So, uh-oh. h of x, uh-oh, no big deal. It's just a function. E equals x squared plus 3x plus 8. And we're going to evaluate it when x equals, let's go, negative 1. Here's my x value, negative 1. Once, twice, three times we're going to plug it in. h of negative 1 equals negative 1 squared. Always put them in parentheses. Plus 3 times negative 1 plus x. Okay? Remember, negative 1 squared is negative 1 times negative 1. Negative 1 squared is negative 1 times negative 1. So, this becomes positive 1, because negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. This becomes 3 times negative 1 is a minus 3, and the plus 8 comes along. 1 minus 3 is negative 2, and negative 2 plus 8 is 6. So h of negative 1 is 6. The second way to answer is as the point. x is negative 1 and y is 6. Okay, one more for us and I will be finished. One more. Number 6. g of x equals, we have negative x squared plus x plus 4, 
and we're going to look at when x equals, and let's go negative 6. Big. Here's your x value, negative 6, once, twice, three times. g of negative 6 equals negative, then we put the negative 6 in parentheses, squared, plus, I put the negative 6 in parentheses because it's negative, plus 4. Now, what's happening here? We have this negative on the outside. Ignore the negative. Do this first. Do this first. When you do negative 6 squared, the negative here stays. This negative just comes down. But negative 6 squared, remember, negative 6 squared is negative 6 times negative 6. Negative times the negative is a positive 36. It's positive 36, but this negative on the outside makes it come negative again. It's okay. Get rid of this double sign. Right? Plus a minus is a minus. And we add 4. Negative 36 minus 6 is negative 42. Bring down the plus 4. Negative 42 plus 4 is negative 38. So we have g of negative 6 equals negative 38. And our point is negative 6, negative 38. So I want you to realize at the end of the saw that we never divide here. Never divide. There. Right there. Okay? This is notation. G of negative x. Leave it together. Alright, thank you for watching.